Today, we're gonna to cover how to improve conversation skills. We're gonna talk about some subtle things that you may not have heard before. Good conversation skills can help you get a date or build a relationship with a potential lifelong friend, can help you in your business or career. Better conversation skills can help you land a new client or lay the groundwork for future promotions or even getting a job in the first place. Let's dive in. How to look approachable so that you don't scare people away. Has anyone ever asked you, are you feeling okay? Are you mad? Are you tired? And you're just sitting there thinking, geez, this is just how my face is. Well, when it comes to having a good social interaction, appearing approachable is definitely a good thing. And if we don't seem approachable, then our interactions won't go smoothly as they could. Here's how to seem 10x more approachable and reduce any accidental resting sad face. Have a slight smile as you go and enter a conversation. So the sciencey stuff behind this, an authentic smile uses the zygomatic major muscle groups raising the corners of the mouth. It also uses the muscles around your cheeks to produce crow's feet right at the edge of your eyes. So this is an authentic smile. Fake smiles don't get the eyes involved. Use the eyebrow flash in conjunction with a authentic smile. So that eyebrow flash, I just did it right there. It's a quick up and down movement with your eyebrows. It sends a friend signal. Studies have shown that even if you need to fake a smile at first, it can change your own state to a more positive one by lowering your heart rate and stress. There's a link for research in the description. A little eye contact goes a long way, especially while speaking. Years ago, I had a buddy named Sean. Sean was like an Olympic gold medalist in eye contact. I remember riding in the back seat of his car as he was driving me and a friend around. And I noticed that whenever he talked to me, he, he made a point to make eye contact with me through the rear view mirror as he spoke to me. The result, I always felt like Sean was present in our conversation, even though I wished he had kept his eyes on the road a little bit more. To level up your conversation skills in a subtle but powerful way, try this when it comes to eye contact. The next time you're speaking in conversation, make a point to make eye contact while you're actually talking. Wait for the other person to look away or look at something else, and then don't stare at them like a psycho. You can just naturally look away too until you notice them looking back at you, and then you can rinse and repeat. It won't be easy at first, but that's okay. No skill is easy at first. Tying your shoes definitely wasn't when you started doing that. This type of eye contact is what my friend Sean did, and it worked wonders. So a common question that I get from my readers is what if they don't look away, they don't blink, they think I'm a psycho? Answer is doubtful this will happen. Test it in the real world before thinking of reasons why it won't work. And especially if you're not staring at them 100% of the time, you should be fine. The iceberg effect, develop a wide range of interests. So let's talk about icebergs. Icebergs have a tip that sits above the water and much, much more that's below the surface. The iceberg tip when it comes to people skills, people who are able to seamlessly slide into any conversation and offer a comment or opinion, that's the tip. But underneath the surface, those people listen to audiobooks, podcasts, read interesting articles, and they have a wide range of interests. Now look, real talk, if you spend 99% of your free time learning about Power Rangers, you won't be very balanced when it comes to interests that you can discuss. And that's a disadvantage when it comes to conversation. Conversations that aren't happening, happening at Comic-Con. What we want is interest diversification. Now off the top of my head, here are five things that I can speak to. Baseball, East Coast Swing Dancing, Podcasts, Icelandic History, Theodore Roosevelt's Early Days. Now look, you don't have to know a ton about any given topic, just have a well-rounded set of interests. This makes being able to bring them up in conversation even more effective because you can draw on things that you've learned about recently. So here's an action step for you. Learn about one new thing today. Use a podcast, an audiobook, YouTube, Wikipedia, some graffiti you found under a bridge somewhere, and learn about one new thing. If you're in a conversation you don't know a lot about the current topic, ask them, be curious, and then boom, that's your one thing that you've learned about and you can bring that up with other people later. Dial up your energy by 10%. What do Tom Cruise, Will Smith, and Ricky Gervais have in common when it comes to watching them on Conan? They're all high energy. Something I see consistently when people are learning how to improve conversation skills is defaulting to a safer, lower energy. I think of this as safety energy. They don't wanna make a big splash or be so loud that they be the center of attention, so they default to a toned down version of themselves. Now, you don't need to be bouncing off the walls like Jim Carrey in The Mask, but dialing up your natural energy, just 10%, can have a great effect on conversations. 
People typically mirror whatever vibe you happen to be putting out into the world that day. Think about it. If you roll up to a group and you tell them about how you had to put your dog to sleep this morning, 99.9% .9 of people are gonna follow your lead and energy level. Oh, I'm so sorry. Look, we're sorry too, Fido. If you can be high energy and show enthusiasm, maybe it's the enthusiasm about the topic, location, party, other people will feed off that. That's called emotional contagion. So action step, be 10% higher energy than you normally would for your next social interaction. How to improve conversation skills by listening around the topic for things that you can talk about. The spokes method will help you connect with anyone on virtually any topic. And all it requires is an ability to think around the current topic. This is where the iceberg effect comes in handy. Imagine a bicycle wheel. In the middle, you have a hub and radiating out from that hub are several spokes. Now imagine the hub as a conversational topic. The spokes are different related topics or observations or questions that you can bring up and introduce. Example, your conversational partner brings up painting, something that you don't know much about. I don't know much about painting. Should you just stonewall them and say, I don't want to talk about painting? Well, of course not. Let's think around the topic of painting and see what we can come up with. What are our spokes for that central hub of painting. I might ask, how do you choose what to paint? What kind of painting do you do? Oh, I love watching Bob Ross videos on YouTube. You can go deeper into who the person is by bringing up, oh, how did you get into painting? As a kid, did you do anything else artistic? If you could paint anything in the world, what would it be? You can even play the role of beginner with a question like, I don't know much about painting. What's your favorite thing about it? Notice how spokes can be used to form questions and observations. Now it's important to balance both. So you don't want to be too question heavy or observation heavy, you wanna balance those. Otherwise you fall into the interrogation trap if you're asking too many questions. Spokes is a great win-win. It's a win for you because you have a great engaging conversation with someone. And it's a win for them because let's face it, other people love talking about themselves and they'll leave that conversation thinking that you are awesome. Try not to interrupt people, but if you do, do this. Look, no one likes being interrupted, but look, it's bound to happen from time to time. Maybe your friend brings up something that you know a lot about and you interject just because you're excited. Now, I know your interruption was coming from a great place and that's okay. Here's what you can say to get back on track and show the other person that you were indeed listening and you weren't just waiting for your turn to speak. Before I interrupted you, you were saying X, Y, Z? This phrase is gold. It acknowledges that you interrupted and it demonstrates that you were listening so well in fact that you can provide them a jumping off point to get back to what they were saying. If you were the one who gets interrupted, well, that's actually a good thing when it comes to conversational skills. So let them, fin let them finish their thought and say, that reminds me, going back to what I was saying about X, Y, Z, now this is really subtle. You're not overtly calling them out, you're just doing a little conversational nudge. Keep an ear out for same here moments. So we all know that people typically like people who are like them. Think about the last time you found out someone else was into the same hobby or interest that you were. Maybe you guys watch the same TV show, so you instantly have something to talk about. People love discovering that they have something in common with others. When they do, it communicates that they belong to the same tribe. Sometimes those connections are obvious. Maybe they like the same sports team, went to the same school, had the same alma mater. Maybe they went to the same conference. Sometimes they're teased out through conversations though. When you discover that you're both into the same obscure TV show and you watch their, their face light up, when you tell them, that's awesome. I call those same here moments. When those moments, those same here moments pop up, call them out. Don't let them pass by like two shifts in the night. The more shared connections you have with someone, the more likely you'll hit it off. And then you can use the spokes method to ask them more about that shared interest because you both like that same thing. The most important part about improving your conversational skills, practice. Do you think LeBron James got to be world-class by not training? Of course not. You can't expect to get good at something without practicing it. Practice is crucial when you're trying to improve any skill. When it comes to conversational skills, practice will take you further than any article uh, or any YouTube video, including this one, could. The best way to practice is to put yourself in a position to have many small, low stakes conversations. This may mean that you schedule something social in your calendar every week with a friend. What I recommend to my clients and readers is something that I call conversational muscle memory. Start tiny, low stakes conversations throughout your day. These conversations can add up over the course of the day. 
So you might wake up in the morning, call an Uber, have a conversation with them, go get some coffee, have a conversation with the person behind you in line. And by the time you're at work, you have a few conversations at work. And if you're at happy hour at 6 p.m. and you see someone that you really wanna to talk to, it's not that difficult just to start one more conversation. If you haven't been talking to anyone all day, it's gonna be much, much more difficult. So just like a athlete trains and practices before the game, you better believe that they're gonna warm up. Well, the same thing is crucial when it comes to conversation skills. Okay, here's what you learned in this video. Look approachable by giving them the old smile and eyebrow flash, oh yeah. Make eye contact, especially while speaking, because that's what a lot of people don't do, so you can stand out. Develop a wide range of interests via podcasts, articles, YouTube videos. Dial up your energy by 10%. Note the difference from the people that you talk to because they'll tend to mirror your vibe. Use the spokes method to listen around the topics for things you can talk about. Try not to interrupt, but if you do, say before I interrupted you, you were saying X, Y, Z. Keep an ear out for same here moments and call them out. Don't let them pass by. Practice with small, low stakes conversation throughout your day so that you will be socially warm and you'll have social momentum. So the next step, if you want more tips to help you supercharge your people skills, click on the link in the description below. I'll send you my free audio guide on joining and enjoying group conversations, as well as Q&A videos, podcasts, and much more. See you next time.